What's up guys, Joe Teens Music here. Y'all know me, try to be the next loop daddy. But in this video, I'm gonna do something a little different. I'm not gonna be making loops, but I'll be describing my loop station setup. I've gotten a few requests. Actually, I think I've gotten like one request, but that's enough for me to make a video. So I'm gonna make a video describing my setup. Uh, shout out to whoever did request it. Uh, I will find you in the comments and I will uh, put your name up on the video just so Kind of give like a little shout out, you know, some feedback to you. Let y'all know I'm thinking about you and shit. But uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get started. So for my sound system, I'm running the motherfucking ProRec Club 4000 PA system. This is the 18 inch subwoofer that comes with four 8 inch treble speakers. And I usually hook the inputs of my loop station into the outputs of the subwoofer. That way I can get all my loops run through the system in live sound. And right up here, I have those four 8 inch treble speakers. This is for my high pass that I was talking about. Now I keep these up top because it looks cool as fuck for one and for second I kind of get like a cool reverb effect as long as I keep the volume down low. This is a pretty inexpensive system not gonna lie it cost me around like $600 came with everything and for what I got going on I think it's just perfect being self taught and all. So let's get on to the next piece here. And y'all know me, so of course I'm running the Bose RC505 loop station at the center of my operation. This is probably my most favorite piece of music equipment. And that's mainly because of the functionality that the loop station has to offer. Each track has its own volume, so you can mute and unmute at will. It also has a myriad of effects that you can assign. For instance, we got the beat shift. We got the beat repeat, we got vinyl flick, all kinds of good stuff. It also has delay, it comes with reverb as well. You get tremolo, chorus, all the good stuff. So it eliminates the need for the actual individual foot switches that use these effects that you have to hook up simultaneously. And like I said, you can assign these effects to individual tracks. So track one can have guitar with reverb. Track 2 can have guitar with chorus or vice versa. So above all, this is my most favorite piece of music equipment. Yes. And for my next piece of music equipment, I'm running my ancient ass, out of fucking date, Radio Shack MD1700 mini keyboard. And how I run that to the loop station is I take the outputs of the keyboard and I run that directly into the instrument input of the RC505, just like so. That way I get all my drums, my keys fed to the loop station where I can loop them and to the system in live time. And this is not MIDI synced. I'm still learning how to do all the MIDI syncing and all that. I attempted it with the keyboard to the loop station. Couldn't get it to work, mainly because I think the MIDI inputs and outputs are broken because it's so old. But I did get the loop station to USB sync to my laptop. But for right now, what we've covered, the loop station goes to the PA system, and then the keyboard goes to the loop station as with the rest of my instruments. And we're gonna get into that, how I hook my guitars up to the loop station so I can make guitar loops and have that run through all the sound and make it all come together. So let's get into that. And for those of you wondering, I do use foot switches, haha -ha, motherfuckers. For instance, I have my pedal board right here. Nothing really fancy, just a tube screamer for my distortion, my noise gate for 60 cycle hum. That way I don't get all that crazy feedback and shit. That sounds like fucking total shit. My ESP hooks into the noise gate, noise gate to the tube screamer, tube screamer to the amp. We'll get into this foot switch in a second. My amp is a Marshall Mini amp. Pretty generic in my opinion, but good for what I got going on. And to catch the signal from my guitar, I use the Shure SM57 dynamic microphone. That runs into the back of the in instrument inputs of my loop station that way I can loop my guitar 
and have that playing live for me to cover over. Here we have the Bose FS6 dual foot switch. Now Bose makes this foot switch to communicate directly to the RC505. That way you can start the tracks from your feet and initiate your loops. Here you have channels A and B, which can be run as mono or separate. I'm running them as mono via TC balance cable. I run from the output of the actual Bose foot switch into the input of the RC505. Here is the control slash one slash two exterior pedal that commands the foot switch and channels one and two refer to channels A and B on the foot switch. So that's for y'all's FYI. For instance, if I pressed channel A on the foot switch, it communicates to the loop station and starts my track and I can assign that channel to any track on my loop station and have multiple channels operate at the same time if need be, just increasing my flexibility with my timing when I'm making loops. All right guys, so that's the basic rundown of my setup. I know that's not too detail oriented, but I covered all the pieces of equipment that I use with my music playing and guitar loops. If y'all are wanting another video, uh, exactly explaining how I hook everything up uh, wire per wire and like a demonstration on how I set my loops up and how I hook my loop station to GarageBand so I can get my sound recorded. Feel free to drop a comment and uh, let me know to do that and I sure will. But other than that, I mean, simple shit. Like I said, I mean, most of the equipment is inexpensive except for the loop station and the actual speakers. And like I said, by buying the loop station by itself, I saved myself the hassle of having to buy the reverb pedals, chorus pedals, delay pedals, and all that fancy other equipment that costs hundreds of more dollars. So I'm, uh, yeah, without further ado, this has been Joe Team's Music, and I hope you enjoyed this message. Be sleep music, that's it.